I've had a request for your presence, my sweetheart. Hey, yo! Oh. He's being very cute. <laughs> oh, time for biting, which means he's done. Okay, thank you for coming. Hello, Bibliophiles. My name is Jill, and I have a problem. Uh, I am an excessive book buyer. I am here today to do a haul of all the books I've bought since I have been uh, quarantined since March. Um, I was I thought about filming this a couple of different times um, when the book pile was not this large. Um, but there is so much controversy on booktube about book hauls and I don't understand why because one, who cares? Like I'm just showing you books that people have bought. Two, I actually love watching them. I love getting ideas of books and not even necessarily what they're about because I don't know about you guys but like sometimes a book cover will be like yes I want to buy that book regardless of the of the content or having a review of it. Um, so I feel like people who, this is controversial yet brave, people who kind of slag off book hauls are people who have too much time on their hands. <laughs> so I'm just gonna show you what I bought. Um, I'll go through first the books that I've bought a lot. So guys one of my um, goals for the year was to only buy 52 books for the whole year and guess what? I've obviously broken that. But when I made that resolution or that goal um, we didn't have a pandemic so I feel okay about <laughs> I feel okay about it. I don't know. I actually have bought more than what I'm showing here, but uh, some of them I've loaned out or I don't know. Some haven't even arrived yet. Doesn't matter. The point is I have a lot of books to show. Some that I've read, some that I haven't. So for the ones I have read, if I have talked about them in the video, I will link all the videos where I've mentioned these books down below. I won't go through and tell you all of them because nobody cares, but if you want to watch some other videos where I've talked about some of these books, um, they'll all be linked in the description. So let's start with what I'm currently reading. I am reading Frying Plantain. If you watched my um, Canadian book recommendations video, this is the first one I mentioned in this book. I obviously haven't read it yet. I read the first story yesterday and I loved it. The writing style is very much up my alley. The um, storytelling style is also up my alley in that it's, oh, I just, I just really enjoyed it. Um, there's something about it that's weighty, but, unresolved and I just love that in a short story collection. So I'm reading that. I'm also still reading Sea People, The Puzzle of Polynesia by Christina Thompson. Um, I've been in a reading slump guys. I've just been in a bit of like a, I think it's the weather's been really really hot. I've also just been, I've just been having some up and down days, some you know, um, some anxiety and depression that have been kind of going like this. So I've just been struggling a little bit. Um, and part of like, the first thing they go is my concentration, of course. So I haven't really been able to focus. And this is a book that I feel like requires focus because it is, I'm re like I'm really, really enjoying it. It's very, very interesting um, about like the history of explorers who, uh, European explorers who first landed in Polynesia and like learning more about the origins of this place in the world, this really unique place on the planet. Um, and I also have to say that the maps in here, like, so there's a map at the beginning and then there's a map at the end which has more detail. Let me just show you. Um, I am loving these maps. I'm finding them incredibly useful and I literally open, like flip to the maps in every single chapter and look at what she's talking about. So yes, I am really loving this, um, just in a reading slump a little bit, uh, but I will finish this hopefully in July. I'll go through the books that I have read first and uh, again if I have talked about them in a the video I will link the video below. I'm not going to go into super detail or give a super long review because <laughs> guys there is a lot of books here and uh, like it's embarrassingly large number of books here. The first is Gulag A History by Anne Applebaum. This is um, a very comprehensive look at the Gulag system in Russia and Soviet Russia. It goes from, spend a lot, spend a lot of time from um, bef before Stalin to the fall of communism in the 90s. This is very good. It's um, pretty dense and dark. Of course it's about concentration camps and about work labor camps but also really enlightening. I would say if you're interested in this uh, topic then this is something worth picking up. I also might say that the intro and conclusion are, they're incredible and I think they give really good setting and context for this book. So if you don't read the whole thing but you want to know more about it, I would just read the introduction and conclusion. I also bought and read Black Diamonds, The Downfall of an Aristocratic Dynasty and the 50 Years That Changed England. So this is looking at um, the shift in, in aristocracy um, and their, their relationship in society and their place in society um, in the years kind of following the First World War. Very much like, um, it says on the back here, like 
set in the splendor of the era popularized by Downton Abbey. So it is kind of, if that's the kind of vibe you enjoy, this is what this is set in. I'm going to read it back to you because I think it's as important. Um, Black Diamonds tells the story of the Fitzwilliams' spectacular decline, of fights over inheritance, rumors of lunacy, a tragic connection to the Kennedys, violent deaths, illicit love, and a class war that literally ripped apart the local landscape. I read that to you because that is what this book is about. It is incredibly choppy. <laughs> so it is interesting. I'm interested in all of those things, but there is no kind of one coherent narrative that links everything together. And it does kind of jump around a bit in um, topics. So I did find this a bit, just like a bit like disjointed to read. I enjoyed it. The writing is pretty good, um, but it's not great. And also <laughs> I just want to say that the, the thing about the connection to the Kennedys, it's an interesting part of history, but 100% does not belong in this book at all. And this author, I felt like needed more direction to like actually hone in on what this book is supposed to be about. All that said, and I said I wasn't going to talk about these books, but I haven't talked this book anywhere else. So um, this is all you're going to get <laughs> on this book. Um, but if this is something that sounds like it interests you, I would still recommend reading it. But I would just caution you that this is not going to be like some grandiose, wonderful, uh, like historical narrative. It's going to be choppy. Some more nonfiction. The Spy and the Traitor, the greatest espionage story of the Cold War. I can't say the word espionage. Um, by Ben McIntyre. This is about um, a spy who worked for the KGB, but he actually started working for MI6 in London. He was very high up in the KGB and he provided a lot of information to MI6 and actually helped in the Cold War. And this is a fascinating kind of romp and I recommend this if you're interested in, again, in like spy stuff, mystery, in Cold War stuff, this is worth picking up. Well written and um, very fast paced. Really enjoyed it. Burning Down the House, Punk Rock, Revolution, and the Fall of the Berlin Wall. There is a theme <laughs> in my books. I think you can tell about the nonfiction I've been reading this year. I might do a, um, a video about how I've been reading a lot of like Soviet, Soviet uh, nonfiction this year. I mentioned this in another video. I enjoyed this. There were some connections drawn in here that I didn't know about before. I thought the profiles of the punks uh, featured in here were really well done. Um, my biggest kind of let down in this book was the writing style was really, it was beyond casual. It was almost like colloquial to the point of I felt like it needed some serious editing slash just like it needed, it needed more, what's the word? Finesse. That's what it needed. This is the last nonfiction I have. It's Hidden Valley Road, Inside the Mind of an American Family by Robert Kolker. I've talked about this before and I'm pretty sure that this is like an Oprah's book club book. So lots of people um, have read it or talked about it. This is about a family who had 12 children, 10 boys and two girls, and six of the boys ended up with schizophrenia. This looks at the family's story in conjunction with the medical side uh, of schizophrenia and what throughout history, um, like recent history, what people have learned about schizophrenia and what they're still currently learning. Very, very interesting. I enjoyed this a lot. Um, I think Robert Coker is a very good writer. I learned a lot from this book about the difficulties of mental illness, not only for the people, the patients who have the illness, but also for the families who are living with them and trying to care for them. So that is, um, yeah, that it was very interesting from that perspective. So I highly recommend this book. On to the fiction that I have bought and read, uh, The Warlow Experiment by Alex Nathan. This is about a man who uh, puts an advertisement in a paper. He wants to contribute to science and he um, offers a man to come live in his basement and see no one and talk to no one for seven years and he will observe him and then as you can imagine things go awry. Um, I liked this book. I didn't love it because it wasn't fleshed out enough um, but the premise is great. I wish it was better. A book I had not talked about but I have read is The Ballad of Songbird and Snakes by um, Suzanne Collins. This was okay. I don't have a lot to say about this book honestly. Like I felt like the writing is good. I really like Suzanne Collins writing. It's still just as good. Um, I found the story a bit like there's, it was very high and low for me. Like some parts I was really interested in, some parts I was just like really bored. It's too long, it's 500 pages. It's too long, should have been, this should have been two books or should have been shorter. So it was fine. I bought and read the work by Maria Mindel. This is um, a Canadian publishing house and a Canadian author. This is set in Toronto. It's about um, a woman who joins a cult, question mark, question mark. And she ends up like giving her whole life for this particular man and for this organization. And uh, what does it really get her in the end? It's, I enjoyed it. It was not um, the best book I've ever read, but I did really like this. It's set in Toronto as well, so it has a, like, it has a really good sense of place. And so, yeah, I enjoyed this book. Just move the camera. Ah! I have two works in translation. The first is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Tashikazu Kawaguchi. There we go. And the translator is Jeffrey Trusolo. 
Trusalot? Still can't pronounce it. Um, this is translated from the Japanese. Um, loved this book. I loved this book. This is about a cafe where people can go back in time and talk to someone, but there's a bunch of rules around that and whew, it is um, heart-wrenching but very beautiful and I just loved the concept. Very, very good. Translated from the Korean, I read The Plotters by Eunsoo Kim. The translator is Sora Kim Russell. This is a story about, like, let me just read the first paragraph. Behind every assassination, there is an anonymous mastermind, a plotter, working in the shadows. Plotters quietly dictate the moves of the city's most dangerous criminals, but their existence is little more than legend. Just who are the plotters? And more important, what do they want? I loved this book. It gave me the kind of mystery thriller thing I wanted. It was also very funny. Um, we'll definitely pick up more books by Unsu Kim. I also bought a copy of Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. I read it last year and I read a library copy, but I picked up this copy because his new book, Trent Dalton's new book is coming out. Um, All Our Shimmering Skies is what it's called. It's coming out in September or something. And I looked at the cover <laughs> of All Our Shimmering Skies and I was like, I need to have the two of them together because they're going to be so beautiful. I'll put a picture here so you can see. Gorgeous, side by side. Um, so that's why I picked this up. I also really enjoyed this book and the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I would like to reread this book someday. Um, I wanna have a copy of it. So that's also why I picked it up. I also read and loved The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I have a review of this book, so I will link it down below. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail, but it is, loved it. My proudest achievement of the year. I finally finished Middlemarch by George Eliot. Um, this is the Penguin Cl Deluxe Classics edition and I love these editions of books. I have some more to show you in a minute, um, but I just think they're really beautiful. Um, they have like French flaps and they do have um, deckled edges, which I hate, but I'm willing to let it go. I read this, I really enjoyed this and I'm not a classics reader as if you know anything about me, I'm not a classics reader, but I really enjoyed this. I'm so glad I finished it and I might do a review of it. I'm not sure, but I really enjoyed this. The last book I have here is the one I've read most recently and the one that I think I loved the most is Half of Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Idiche. I had never read any of her books. I read her little like a feminist pamphlet, but during this um, Black Lives Matter movement and all the lists that were coming out, I was like, gosh, I've never read any of her books and I need to read some of her books. This book, five star read for me. I absolutely loved it. I flew through it in a couple of days because I just was so compelled by all the characters in here. I'm very excited to read Americana and see um, how I feel about that. I'm sure I will love it as well because her writing is so incredible. This will be on my list of one of my favorite books I've read this year. So keep an eye out for that in December. Those are the books I have bought and read. These are the books that I have yet to read, but I am very excited for all of them. The first is The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. And the reason I picked this up is because as I was reading Half of the Yellow Sun, I was thinking, I need, to, I, I need to know more about the decolonization of Africa. I know a little bit about it because I read a bit of Franz Fanon in school, not much. Like when I was at university, I read a little bit about um, post-colonial literature, but not enough. And so I went into my bookstore and I was like, hey, uh, I want to know more about the decolonization of Africa. And they were like, buy this book. And so I bought this book. Um, so I'm looking forward to kind of picking my way through this over the next couple of months. I don't think it's a book I can read, like sit down and read straight through because it's, I suspect it's gonna be quite heavy and quite um, like theoretical and stuff. But um, I will definitely be looking at this and uh, going through over the next couple of months. I also picked up a copy of Policing Black Lives by Robin Maynard. This is about policing black lives in Canada. I picked up a copy uh, at my local bookstore again. I talked about this in my uh, readathon announcement video on my TBR. I will be reading this for the readathon video, and this is about a history of state violence in Canada from slavery to the present, it says. And I have some friends who've already read this. They said it was really, really important, really interesting. They learned a lot from it. So I'm looking forward to kind of sitting down with my highlighter, my pen, taking notes, and uh, really in like kind of immerse myself into this uh, book. I also picked up a copy of They Were Her Property, White Women as Slave Owners in the American South. Um, this is a game that's on those lists of black authors to pick up. And this one really interested me because I studied slavery in school a little bit, the history of slavery a little bit, and um, we never talked about women. This would have been really interesting to read in school alongside like some of the other texts that we read. We read a lot of like slave owner narratives, like, um, like diaries and stuff. And while that was interesting, sort of, I would have liked to know more about the women's perspective. So I'm glad that I have this now. I suspect this will also be a bit of like a heavier read, um, but I am super looking forward to this. And I haven't read like a really dense history in a while. So I am looking forward to like getting my teeth into it. Again, my highlighters are gonna get a workout uh, for these next three, for these three books. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. I also picked up Shakespeare in Swahili Land in Search of a Global Poet by Edward Wilson Lee. Uh, this is my favorite cover I have purchased all year. And in case you didn't know, one of my, um, kind of niche interests are books about Shakespeare, not 
like his plays but about him and his life and how people perceive him so is that niche i don't know i enjoy it and i'm looking forward to reading this i also bought against all odds the untold story of canada's unlikely hockey heroes by pj now Warren now Warrenski. wow that was bad this is the name i can't pronounce it i'm very very sorry um that sounded fake, but if not, I am very sorry. I'm embarrassed that I can't pronounce names. It's a problem I have, and hopefully I'll get better over time. I've tried. I'm trying. Anyway, this is the story about Canada's hockey team who went to the Winter Games in 1948. Yeah, and they won, I think. Or else it would be called Against All Odds, would it? I am not really a hockey fan. I'll watch hockey if it's on, and um, I have a team that I support. But it's just the team my dad told me to support, <laughs> so. But I do really enjoy sports narratives, so I am interested in reading this. I also picked up this book called The Staircase Girls by Katherine Seymour. The, I'll read the back to you because I think the back is a better explanation than I could give. For 16-year-old Joyce, who lived in one of the poor streets in Cambridge, the college building she was about to enter represented a privilege, wealth, a life she'd never live. As a better, Joyce would be working up and down one of the stone staircases, making the beds of the male students, sweeping floors, and dusting desks. She never expected to also find herself mothering, chastising, and sometimes even covering up for her boys. Uh, this is something I never knew existed, the idea of betters in Cambridge. When I saw this, I was like, fascinating, tell me more. So I picked this up. Now that I'm reading it, the back of it, I wanna read it now. So maybe this will get me out of a reading slump. So maybe I will put this aside to pick up soon. On a whim, I also picked up the book Bethlehem, Biography of a Town by Nicholas Blinko. Um, this is probably just what it sounds like, historical and also um, present day Bethlehem. I'm not sure if that's entirely true. Um, it says here, Bethlehem is so suffused with history and myth that it feels like an unreal city, even to the people who call it home. <laughs> so I'm interested in reading that as well. The last nonfiction book I have bought and not finished yet is Denial, Holocaust, History on Trial by Deborah E. Lipstadt. If you don't know, this is the story of Deborah Lipstadt herself, who um, had a libel suit filed against her by someone that she had um, said was a Holocaust denier, and so they put the Holocaust denial on trial. And uh, this, the story is really interesting, and I haven't obviously read the book, so this is the story of, this is the book about the trial, I'm pretty sure. And um, I actually really like books about trials, so I am interested to read this. We are at the last stack of books. These are the fiction books that I have bought and not yet read. The first one is Salt Slow by Julia Armfield. This is a short story collection. This is a very short short story collection. Let me just look how many pages this is. Um, there's only there's only 200 pages so um hopefully i'll get to this quite soon i'm also um traveling i'm going back to newfoundland for an extended period of time uh for the rest of the summer soon uh so i think i'm, I'm trying to take some small books with me and i'll probably take this one with me um as it is quite tiny and uh, we'll be able to fit in my suitcase without causing me too much grief then i have the book the flying troutmans by miriam taves miriam taves is an author that i love i've talked about before on this channel but this book I got from a mystery box from my local used bookstore that I ordered uh, like at the very beginning of this whole pandemic. And in that box, um, the books I got were like awful, <laughs> which is fine. Like it paid 20 bucks for four books and the other three were stuff I would never ever read. This is the only one that was even remotely interesting to me um, because I like Miriam Taves, but this is a book I have not heard anyone talk about. Um, so I don't know if like it's because it's bad or because it's I don't know if it's one of her first books like I really have no idea although look at those nice orange end papers that's nice um, so I have this on my shelf um, I have no urgency to get to this book who knows uh, I'm just glad to have more Miriam Taves in my life and someday I may just have a really big hankering for her books and now I have one there's also a period of time during this pandemic where everyone on Instagram was talking about Bel Canto by Anne Patchett. I felt like I saw like 30 posts in a row, people reading this book and loving it. So I was like, I must read Bel Canto. <laughs> so I went out and bought a copy of this. I actually started reading it. I'm how many far, how far am I into it? I'm only 40 pages in, um, but I do think I, I'm enjoying it. I put it down because I had other things I had to finish, uh, but I am going to finish this. Uh, I really like Anne Patchett's writing, so I will probably go back to this very soon. I also picked up My Gear of Meats by Ruth Ozeki. Uh, Ruth Ozeki wrote, um, wasn't read by, her, read by her? A Tale for the Time Being, right, and I really enjoyed that, and that's like, probably her best known book, I would say, but I've seen a few people on uh, booktube now talk about this book, and I had never heard of it, but then I found it, um, on some website that I was like, yeah, okay, great. Super cheap book, interested in reading this book. Also, I love, love this cover. I don't know, it's so weird. Also look at the back. 
How great is that? Looking forward to getting to this soon as well. I also bought Agatha Christie's The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. I have a couple of Agatha Christie on red on my shelf, but for some reason I heard someone talk about how this is like the book that changed the whole genre and so I needed to pick it up. And summer for me is Agatha Christie season so I'm looking forward to reading this. I also picked up The Wheaton by Joanne Jackson. I feel like I've talked about this non-stop but this I found on like just a website for Canadian uh, books that are eligible for nomination for the Giller Prize this year. Let me read you the back because I really like the back. A year after the early death of his wife, John Davies comes hesitantly out of retirement to take a job at the Wheaton, a senior's resident. Having resisted getting involved for his entire life, John is immediately out of his comfort zone. The Wheaton is a boundary-free environment and he is immersed in the kinds of sticky matters he usually does not, he usually does his best to avoid. Surrounded by mortality and the ghosts of regret haunting many of the residents, John begins to do the unthinkable, relate to his fellow creatures and reconsider his past. Very excited about this. Just yesterday, I went out to pick up some things at the, at the pharmacy and I was like, I will not go to my local bookstore. And guess what I did? I went to my local bookstore and I bought The Aosawa Murders by Riku Onda. I, I'm sorry for that pronunciation. This is translated from the Japanese by, let's get it right, Alison Watts. I picked this up primarily because one, the cover is incredible. I absolutely love this. Two, uh, the Women in Translation readathon is coming up in August, and so I figured this would be um, a good one for that since the writer and the translator are both women. Another book in translation, I have this The Discomfort of Evening by Marike, Marike Lucas Rinveld. <sighs> Again, I'm very sorry for the pronunciation. This is translated from the Dutch by Michelle Hutchison. And I like that her name's on the back, so actually uh, we can see uh, very easily who the translator is. This is um, on the shortlist for the Man Booker, as you can see, uh, shortlisted for the Man Booker 2020. They haven't announced it as of me filming this video. I don't know when it's, is it August they announced it? I don't know. But everyone who talked about this book says it's really strange and I am just interested in reading more books that are set in countries that I don't often read translated fiction from. And this is, I've never read anything translated from Dutch that I'm aware of. So um, very looking forward to reading this. Then I bought some books that are very unlike me because I was watching, I can't remember her channel name, I'll, I'll put the name on the screen here, but she reads like all classics or mostly classics. And she was talking about reading Anna Karenina and how much she's enjoying it. And I was like, I need to read some classics, <laughs> which is just like not my jam at all. Um, so I picked up, because I had read Middlemarch and that Penguin Ad Deluxe Edition classic, Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition, there we go. I picked up this Jane Eyre copy because I really, I think these are really, really beautifully done. I like the artwork is so stunning on these. Um, also Jane Eyre is one of the books I want to read, one of the five books I want to read this year. Middlemarch is one, this is another one. So I picked up a copy of Jane Eyre for that challenge. But then I also picked up Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Again, look at this, like, look at that back. It's so good. Look at the end papers, like just incredible. Um, end papers, the French flaps, I mean. Um, really, really, uh, really beautiful. I just love the artwork on these. I am not a Dickens fan. I've only read, I think I've only read Oliver Twist. I've read A Christmas Carol, who hasn't, um, but I read Oliver Twist when I was in university and I hated it. But I think I hated it because it maybe was the wrong one for me to read at the time. Um, because I remember vividly having a very strong reaction to a scene in that book where someone pops up in a window and I was like, oh, like actually frightened. So <laughs> a girl in my book club, a friend of my book club, she um, said that one of her favorite writers, her favorite writer is probably Charles Dickens. So I sent her an email and I was like, where should I start? And uh, she said, Great Expectations. So let's do it. Uh, when will I read it? Who knows? Um, but now that I have it, I'm gonna read it. The last two books I have are by uh, Irish authors, which was not intentional, but here we are. I have From a Low and Quiet Sea by Donald Ryan. This I think was nominated for the Booker or something like that. It was like nominated for some prize, shortlisted, whatever. Um, but I have a couple of friends who have read this and they say that he is one of the most beautiful writers. And last year I read a lot of Irish literature, um, more than I had ever before, and I really uh, jived with it as the kids say. So I'm uh, excited to pick this up. And it's quite short again, so this is a good for a good travel book. And the last book I picked up is one I've wanted to read for so long. A Keeper by Graham Norton. This is, I think it's a murder mystery? 
I don't know what this book is about at all, but I do know that some people who I watch on booktube, many people I watch on booktube have read this over the past year and a half, have absolutely loved it. And I really like Graham Norton as a person and I also um, like this cover a lot. And I trust their reviews, people who've read it and said it's really, really good. I think this will be gr just a great thing to pull off the shelf someday and be like, I need a quick read, something quite good. This is it. I feel like I cannot make a short video. I don't know how to do it. This quarantine has been very difficult and buying books has been like a source of comfort for me. It's a source of distraction, um, you know, Sometimes just like looking at my books makes me feel better and maybe that's crazy to say, but it's true. Um, so I'm really happy to have this collection. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye.